I am joined now by Minnesota Representative Peggy Bennett as we look more into how cities in greater Minnesota, especially Albert Lee, are saving their economies amidst the worst year that some businesses have ever had. Peggy, I wanted to bring in a lawmaker because in Ross Becker's piece, we heard from City Council Member Rich Murray bringing up the point, wanting to know why people, lawmakers specifically, aren't shouting from the rooftop to convince Governor Walls to let local leaders make decisions on the local level with the pandemic response. What do you say to that? Well, I guess I agree with him, um, and, but I do believe many of us have been shouting from at least our rooftop, which doesn't sometimes get heard when you're in the minority, especially. Um, but, you know, I've made it plenty clear in my communications with my constituents and and more that we need to get Minnesota opened up safely, of course, but more than that, we need to get the legislature back involved so that we have, you know, a co-equal three branch government like we're supposed to. And that to me is one of the most important things, uh, getting back to, to government the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Philip Johnson uh, went around, he's with uh, the redevelopment agency there in, in Albert Lake, went around surveying businesses, asking them how they're doing, what they need, that kind of thing. And he was told a rough estimate just in his own, you know, personal survey um, that businesses were telling him that in the first quarter of this year, they were going to need between $5,000 and $20,000 to survive. Uh, does that sound uh, about the same as what you've been hearing from businesses there in Albert Lee? And are they getting that? You know, I have heard, well, I guess one nice thing about being living in a small town is I can just go stop by or give a business owner a call. And so I've been able to be connected with our local business owners. And I've heard everything from, you know, we're doing great. Some businesses survived quite well during the pandemic, especially our bigger big box stores, but even some of the smaller stores and even a few restaurants, for example, you know, our pizza places that were already prepared to do a lot of um, getting people their food outside of the, the restaurant itself. So, but there are some very much some hurting businesses too. And I did talk to some of those. Um, they do need more help. And they're especially, number one, they told me, they are so grateful for the community support. That That is something that this has blessed them great, greatly. And I think as a community, we've really learned to value our local businesses more throughout this. Secondly, they said they're grateful for the help that they've gotten, um, but some of them do need more help. And I think we need to look at that. And one of the uh, statements that I heard from just a, a small restaurant, just a little mom and pop restaurant in town here, is that they, they said, this is scary. We wanna know that we can keep going and we're not sure we can. So. The big thing they need to do is, is have some predictability and uh, not get shut down again. I think that's very important. And, and help them, for example, this PPP tax relief that we should be doing, um, that kind of thing. We can help in those ways too. It's a lot of ways we can help, including in the community, continuing to support our local business. Continue my conversation with Peggy Bennett as we talk about businesses that have been hit with unexpected taxes, especially the PPP taxes, and do they have to pay them back? Loans that they have gotten at the very beginning, nobody knew that they were going to be taxed on them. Where is our state conformity with the federal law at this point? Because so many of them are saying to tax us on this uh, is just downright not only unfair, it's wrong. It is wrong, especially when our state is sit sitting with a little over $4 billion now between our surplus and the federal money that we've gotten. The state is flush. Um, our local businesses and many of our employees that were out of uh, work for so long are not flush, and we need to help them by not taxing them. Uh, it's not fair that the state takes a cut of that relief. We don't need it. The state does not need it. Those businesses and, and also the people on unemployment, the bonuses that they got are going to be taxed too. Now, normally unemployment uh, payments are taxed, but that above and beyond money that was meant to help during the pandemic, that shouldn't be taxed either. No, I, and, I get, and I get where you're coming from. That's what they're saying. So, you yeah. know, it's kind of like preaching to the choir, but what's being, what's being done, <laughs> that's, being what, done yeah, that's, that's what that's they the want to know. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's the important part. And actually, your, good question. I, on Monday, this last Monday, 
Republicans in the House uh, pushed to have that PPP tax relief bill. The Senate passed it strongly bipartisan. Um, I think only 12 voted against it. And we think that should be voted on in the House now. And unfortunately, our Democrat majority refused to take that up. We also tried to bring the tax relief for those on unemployment so that those bonuses that they got would not be taxed. That didn't come up either. And you know what? We need to do that now. This is tax season. People are counting on you know the, the money they're getting back from their taxes to help them out pay bills. And the state shouldn't be taking a cut of that right now. And my fear is they're holding like this PPP tax relief and other tax relief. They're going to hold that hostage and put it in bonding bill or not bonding bills, the omnibus bills to try to get those to pass other things, you know, that they want. And I don't like that. This this is too important and the timeliness needs to happen now. So for people who don't understand the legislative lingo with that, mm-hmm. break that down. These omnibus bills and how uh, how that's going to get in the way. I, you know, I mean, there's this is just not an easy process and it should be maybe a little bit easier. It should be. And I've been a big advocate to get rid of omnibus bills. I think they're a poor, sloppy way to legislate and a very non-transparent way. But omnibus bills are the big bills full of a bunch of smaller bills. And that's what all the committee chairs are working on putting together now. Many, many bills we've heard in committee are getting put together in these huge, gigantic bills. Some of it will be, what, at least from my perspective, good things, and some will not be good things. And it's going to force us to try to vote for those. And my fear with some of this tax relief for businesses and for the workers, you know, that we just talked about, is that this is going to get held hostage, not passed now like it should be as individual standalone bills, but held towards the end of the session, put in big omnibus bills to try to force legislators to vote for these bills when there's other things in those bills that, that we don't like. So that's wrong and that's holding, you know, hurting people hostage and I don't like that. All right, Peggy, I do appreciate it. Thank you, my friend, and we'll talk again. We'll catch up with uh, things as we get closer to May. Sounds good. It's good to talk to you again. And you. Bye-bye.